Hi guys, so I'm continuing my fistula blog, vlog, um, and I thought I would make a video about how I'm feeling before going on this trip uh, that I'm going on with the intention of finally getting my fistula cured. I was diagnosed with a fistula when I was 20 and now I'm almost 27 um, and I got it when I was 19. So it's been um, a pretty significant portion of my life at this point. Basically my entire adult life I've had this fistula. I'll tell you guys a bit of the story I suppose. So um, it started out with an abscess. And I do believe that there are emotional patterns that can be associated with disease. As much as I do believe in diet and I believe in keeping yourself physically healthy, I at the same time can also really relate to the idea that diseases are associated with sort of spiritual and psychological issues as well. Uh, basically, I was feeling a lot of anger and self-hatred and I feel like the fistula for me was associated with unresolved anger. Like when I imagine it, especially at the beginning, I would imagine this anger. And I wonder if that's other people's experiences. I biked everywhere and I didn't sit on the seat. I just stood up um, for years. And um, yeah, at the beginning, it was very painful. About five days after this pain started, I went to the doctor and I never went to the doctor so that was a big deal for me um, and he thought I had an ingrown hair and he continued to think that for about a year I was on and off antibiotics throughout that year when I took the antibiotics the infection would go away but as soon as but not completely it would get better and then as soon as I went off them again it would get really bad so shortly after I went to the doctor the first time, the abscess burst, which I didn't know. Um, and there was huge amount of blood and pus, uh, like a lot. Uh, I was still going to work and my coworkers were asking me why I was limping, uh, if there was something wrong with my leg. And I was completely mortified and I was like, no, I'm fine, but I was in absolutely excruciating pain. I was like crying on my way to work from the pain of walking and then going to work, pretending that everything was fine and then just being in absolute despair. So I got through that year somehow and then I moved to the city from uh, continuing my university. Uh, and when I got to university, the doctors I saw there were basically like, you definitely don't have an ingrown hair. And I was like, thank you, I know. And then they carried on testing, which my other doctor had never done, and discovered that I had a fistula. So I had an um, ultrasound at first and then an MRI to map the track. Then I went on a waiting list to see a gastroenterologist and was on the waiting list for the rest of the school year. And during that year, I was in really, really terrible pain, partially from the fistula, which I had absolutely no idea how to take care of. I felt completely depressed. Um, but I also was having symptoms of Crohn's. 
so my intestines were in a lot of pain. I was having to use the washroom many, many times a day. I had no energy. It was like a really awful time. Uh, if I drank one beer, I would throw up. If I like, I was really, really sensitive to a lot of things that I was eating. But again, I had no idea how to take care of myself. I had no idea what to do. Since I was on the waiting list for the surgeon and the gastroenterologist, there wasn't really anything else that the doctors did or could do. I was just in this period of waiting and my appointment, sometimes I would get one, but then somebody more important than me would come along and I would get pushed back and pushed back. And by the end of the year, I was basically suicidal. It was really bad. And then I know that people with Crohn's have even like way more terrible stories. Not that it's a competition, but even with the case that I had, I don't know how they got through it. So I remember at one point, towards the end of the school year, um, and I was doing well in school in terms of grades, but I was uh, not really socializing. And I just couldn't socialize because I also felt extremely ashamed of what was happening. On top of the pain and everything, I felt like I couldn't talk about what was happening with anybody. And I really didn't. And at the end of the school year, I remember there was a particular phone call with my mom, who at that time really didn't realize how bad things were because I didn't really talk about it. And I always basically looked fine. I had lost weight, but I didn't look like I was in very bad condition and it's kind of considered beautiful to lose weight in our society anyways so people are supportive of that even though it was the result of illness and so my mom who also has Crohn's uh, at the end of the school year when she realized that I had just waited the entire year without seeing a doctor or getting any help and I was get getting to the point where I couldn't take it anymore uh, she got me in to see her gastroenterologist who was back where I had been living when I first got the fistula so I moved back to her house for the summer and I fairly quickly got to see the gastroenterologist there after she told him my sort of story. And so I had had the fistula for almost two years by that time. And it had been very infected and filling up and draining and all that basically the entire time and I was terrified. And um, so... He did the colonoscopy, diagnosed me with Crohn's, put me on this, that, and the other thing. And then in terms of the fistula, um, I got a surgery to put in two cetons because the fistula was two openings on the outside and one on the inside. So having the, fist, the, having the cetons in did help to some extent, but emotionally they really didn't help because it wasn't a cure it wasn't a fix and they hung out of like the bottom and were so long and I felt like how could I date anyone or because I was single at the time how could I have like a new partner with these cetons in. Like, I just felt like I was just gonna be single for the rest of my life. And I felt completely ashamed and embarrassed and humiliated and also so devastated that there was no treatment, either for the Crohn's or the fistula. I was like, shocked that that was just, you know what, you're gonna just be like this forever. And that was extremely hard to take. Um, and then 
I did lose faith in the doctors, mostly because of an um, allergic reaction that I had to Imuran, which I have talked about in other videos. But the way that they treated me and the way that they neglected me, I just couldn't trust them anymore. I, I was completely devastated by the entire medical experience that I had and that's I trusted them completely before I was never a skeptic about medicine at all I went along with all of this and after going through it I realized you know these people really could not care less about me they I talked to four doctors while I was having that allergic reaction which put me in the hospital twice. Not a single one actually looked up the allergic reaction. They all told me to keep taking it. And I realized, wow, these people can't even take five minutes. And I looked it up myself afterwards. I was like, how? And it was the exact allergic reaction that had been described by others was what I had. And I couldn't trust them anymore. So, Anyways, the whole experience came together in such a way that I couldn't deal with it. So, I had the Setons, but eventually I got sick of the Setons because um, my when I went to clean, because the loop was so huge and just, like, hanging down, I would get, like, my hand sort of caught in, like, this really awful rubber plastic string with these knots that were about this big with like a poking out basically sharp edge because they would cut the plastic and then that would become like a corner and then on top of that that my hand would sometimes get caught and it would pull and when it pulled it was like the worst feeling in the world so I was like I hate these I hate having them I hate the way they look I hate the way they feel they aren't curing my fistula anyways, and eventually I just took them out because I was like, basically, what's the point? <laughs> so, um, though they did help with the infection, and I have heard since then that there's no such thing as a comfort seton. Uh, that is not what I had. <laughs> so, anyways, um, throughout the years, I learned some ways to cope with having a fistula, I started doing Epsom salt baths, which is extremely helpful. I did try drinking milk and turmeric and coconut oil and pepper mixed together every day. I don't know how long I did that for, maybe a month or two. To, like somebody on the internet said that it worked for them. That didn't work for me, but definitely helped with the infection. Being on the specific carbohydrate diet and since then, a fairly healthy diet has definitely helped. I don't get the big infections anymore that I used to get where it swells up and it drains and it's just hell. I, I don't go through that hell anymore. However, you know, I still get like some discharge, especially after a bowel movement. It's definitely uncomfortable and um, if I walk for a long time it can get really irritated. So. I'm definitely still affected by the fistula, and it also gives me just a bad feeling to know that it's there. And um, although I've dealt with it emotionally a lot, like it doesn't devastate me the way that it used to. I have a lot more confidence, like I don't worry about it the way that I used to. Um, and nobody has actually really cared about me having a fistula except for me. I was so ashamed like to tell anybody but nobody has really cared except for me. <laughs> so that's good to know. But basically I want to put that chapter of my life behind me and I'm really tired of the inconvenience and the discomfort associated with having a fistula. So that's why I'm going to India. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling a bit nervous. I'm feeling a bit like I really hope that things work out in whatever way 
but in the end, I hope that I do get better. And I would like to share this experience because as unfortunate as it is, I've really never found something that I would consider an effective treatment in Canada. And I know that I'm not the only one. And I have, you know, it's not just Canada, it's also the United States, Australia, Israel, um, a lot of Western countries don't have a effective treatment for fistula or crowns for that matter, but I could do that here. I feel like I need help with the fistula. And I'm, I am in some ways looking forward to the trip. I know that it's going to take me out of my comfort zone and I really hope that I learn some things that I need to learn. Um, and I'm going to do my best to make it a good experience. That's why I'm going to Mysore so that I can do yoga as well. Uh, because I had this feeling of like, what am I going to do for all that time just by myself in another country? Um, so I hope that I can make it a good experience. And I have been to India before, so that makes it maybe a little easier, but also knowing how chaotic it can be, it makes it also maybe a little harder. <laughs> but it's a really amazing country, so um, you can really learn a lot there. So, yeah, I guess the reason why I'm going is basically because I feel like it's the only choice that I can make. I feel like, you know, I know that I want to get the fistula fixed. I know that I've exhausted my options here uh, so far as I can find them. And even asking Chinese doctors and naturopaths, Western doctors, um, an Ayurvedic surgeon who does who did that in India but can't do it here. You know, I've asked around and I've never, I've got my hopes up a few times only to get let down again. That's an update from now. Uh, and I'll continue to do updates about the fistula in India. I really hope that I can finally put this behind me and maybe help some other people who are suffering in the same way and hopefully make it so that people don't have to have fistulas for seven years and can get it treated without spending so many thousands of dollars and you know what I mean like maybe raise a little bit of awareness and um I'll let you know the details. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye.